Welcome to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. This uh, afternoon, we have a special guest, uh, Minister Stephanie M. Seaton. Okay, you're on the air. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am happy to be here uh, on this amazing platform today with Mr. Emmanuel. Uh, we met most recently and just uh, glad to meet his acquaintance uh, to see what this man of God has going on. He's got so many amazing things going on and um, he extended this opportunity to, to for me to be here today. So thankful, thankful, thankful. Um, I am, as he said, Stephanie M. Seaton. Uh, I am a minister of the gospel first. Um, and then I am a published Christian author. Um, I currently have uh, 10 publications and I'm in uh, the process of working on two projects right now as we speak, uh, one of them uh, with a co-author, um, and that book is called Innocence Taken. And listen, Emmanuel, I'm, I'm really excited about that book. Um, it speaks about uh, children who go through abuse, all forms of abuse, whether it be physical, mental, emotional sexual abuse. And so um, Innocence Taken is going to speak to a lot of people in our community. Um, you know, there there's the phrase in our community where, you know, what happens in this house stays in this house. Have you heard that before, Emmanuel? Um, what happens uh, in this house stays in this house? Yes. No, I heard something similar. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of Vegas, uh, a lot of our families culturally, when things happen, it's supposed to be a secret. We don't talk about it. We don't tell people. And that a lot of times keeps us in bondage, right? Yeah. Uh, so we go through traumas in our childhood and that keeps us in bondage. And so I have a book coming out July the 1st called Innocence Taken. Uh, that is with myself, Stephanie M. Seaton, and Rodriguez Underwood. So be on the lookout for that. That will be published on Amazon.com, as well as many other sites. You'll be able to get it through Barnes and Nobles, as well as other um, sites. Um, and so that is the thing I have coming up. Then I have a project that I've actually made into a community project, Emmanuel. I'm getting women involved. And the name of the book is called The Crazy Girl in My Head Has to Go. <laughs> I like that title. Yes. Listen, so I call it stinking thinking. You know how we have ideas that just keep us like in an uproar, kind of like we overthink about everything. And then it's like, oh, none of that even happened. Like you've thought about something for an hour, a week, two weeks, and all these what ifs, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't even enjoy the moment that's in front of you because of the stinking thinking. And so I had a struggle with that, overthinking and having all these crazy scenarios. And so um, I thank God for healing and deliverance. Uh, but I'm going to be writing this book, partnering with other women that are willing to share their stories so that we can help minister to women and get some women set free. And so the name of that book, um, it will be coming out. I haven't decided the exact date yet. It's in the works, but uh, the girl in my head has to go. <laughs> and hey, it can be for men too. It doesn't just be the girl in my head. I'm sure there's some men too, Mr. Manuel, that think about stinking, you know, stinking thinking and things that keep us, you know, in an uproar. Nothing's even happening, right? Yeah. If you don't mind, I want to ask you, uh, uh, who's your publisher? I actually self-publish. I'm actually a publisher myself. Amen. So, me too. Uh, I am too. Yeah. Yeah. So the Lord blessed me where I became a publisher for myself. And now by the grace of God, I have a, I just signed my seventh author on my brand. And so um, that is Stephanie M. Steeden Arthur Publishing. And so um grateful and blessed for that opportunity as well. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just whatever the Lord wants me to do, Emmanuel, that's what I want to do. Um, and it brings me passion. You know, it brings me passion to be able to do the things that the Lord wants me to do. You know, we can clock in and out all day on jobs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, working for other people, you know, helping other people to become prosperous, right? But when you have a passion for God and the things of God, 
it doesn't even seem like work. Like writing these books, you know, uh, ministering the gospel, to me, it doesn't even seem like work. It, it just, I mean, it's passion. It's passion. And so um, I fully enjoy that being a minister, being an author, being a publisher. And then the Lord blessed me most recently uh, to also have a television show platform, which you will be a guest on soon. I'm really excited about that. Um, and so just being able to do all things uh, that have to do with ministry, it's, it's an amazing ability. Um, so I'm looking forward to you coming on uh, next week. Yes, great. Uh, if you don't mind, tell my uh, listeners the name of your show so that way they can uh, participate as well. Okay, so the name of my uh, show is called the Stephanie M. Seaton Sunday Show. Um, it definitely broadcasts more than just on Sundays. I started out just doing one show a week on Sundays, uh, but then the Lord touched that thing. And so I started getting requests to be able to come on more than just on Sundays and uh, started getting a lot more opportunities to um, interview men and women of God that are doing something and showing change in the community. And so it had to be more than just one day a week. And so you can follow me on Facebook, Stephanie M. Seaton. Um, I also have Stephanie M. Seaton Sunday Show. I have my ministry group, which is actually on Facebook as well. It's called Diamonds in the Rough uh, Ministry Group. Um, and then I also have the um, page for the uh, television show. And then I have an official uh, book and author page, Stephanie M. Seaton. So those are all the different handles that you can um, keep up and see what I've got going on. Um, I just want to, if it's okay, Manuel, I kind of just want, uh, I know I've kind of talked a little bit about my brand, but I have a uh, something on my heart that I would really love to talk about for a few minutes, if that's okay. Um, uh, you know, woman of God, uh, the show is, I turned it over to you. So however you well, the Lord, yes, whatever the Lord lay on your heart to share with, with my audience, go ahead, feel free. Well, first of all, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for allowing me to be here. I, I don't want to spend this whole time talking about myself. As grateful as I am for the opportunity, um, I definitely want to bring it back around to give God glory. And and with that being said, um, the, the thing that the Lord's been kind of talking to me about and putting out there is a call for sons and daughters to come home. Um, and so I say prodigal daughters and prodigal sons, it's time to come home. And when I say come home, I'm not talking to a, about a specific church, uh, any church that is preaching and teaching the Holy Bible, the word of God, God, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit um, is a church that would be approved. But what I'm talking about when I say come home is come home to God, the father himself, come home and have relationship with Jesus Christ, allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. Because the reality of the situation is uh, in order for true change and for true healing to take place in your life, you have got to be in relationship. And so um, I'm reminded of the story of the prodigal son uh, when he was out and, you know, sitting and just thinking to himself, you know, and, it, and the Bible says that he, he came to himself. Uh, and when he came to himself, he realized, you know, I don't have to be out here going through this, doing this. You know, my father has everything and I'm out here living this life like this. And so what I say to you, man and woman of God is it's time for you to come home. The Lord is standing there with arms wide stretched with grace and mercy um, ready and available for you. And it's unearned, unmerited, you know. Um, grace and mercy. And I, I say to you, however you come, whether you have to crawl, whether you have to jump, to dive, however you got to get there, um, it is time to come home and to develop that relationship with our creator, God, the father, Jesus, the son, the Holy Spirit, so that our lives can be changed. You know, a lot of times, Emmanuel, the enemy will have us bamboozled, I call it, um, to where we think that, oh, I've done too much, you know, the Lord won't forgive me, or, you know, I've, I went too far, you know, have you ever heard that before? Yes. People, yeah, people think I'm not worthy, right? But but thank God for the blood, right? 
Mm -hmm. So when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. That, that his blood covered everything. And so there is nothing that you could, can do or have done that the blood of Jesus can't cover and hasn't covered. And so I, I really just strongly say, get your mind back, come to yourself, uh, think to yourself, you know, um, about the blood of Jesus and what he did on the cross um, and find yourself back in right relationship with the father. Um, that That is my plea and, and my call uh, for today, uh, Brother Emmanuel, is that men and women of God would come back. And if you and if and if this is your first time, let me say that, because, you know, sometimes it may not necessarily be coming back. But if you are new to the fold, then then I, I, I tell you, there is there is nothing like the peace of God. It surpasses all understanding, no matter how much chaos and calamity you may have going on in your life, when you surrender your life and you surrender your will to the Holy Spirit and you truly surrender, uh, the Lord will come in and he will fellowship with you. He will talk with you. He will guide you and direct you by, through the Holy Spirit um, and give you all kind of insight and instructions. And listen, it is nothing like it. It is nothing like it. And so um, I thank you for allowing me to be able to minister that word today, Brother Emmanuel. Um, prodigal sons and prodigal daughters, it's time to come home in the name of Jesus. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, yes. In the name of Jesus. I know you have an amazing platform. Uh, you're talking a lot about preventing genocide, war crimes things of that sort. And I just want to say, I think you're doing an amazing work. Uh, I saw all of the platforms that you have and uh, your books, uh, the availability of your books. And um, I just want to say, I commend you, man of God. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, I speak, speak blessings and favor over you. Um, and I know that you have your project coming up with uh, the movie and everything else. And you know what? All you have to do is have the vision. You've got the vision. And now the Lord has touched that thing and he's going to make it come to pass. So um, I say be encouraged to you. Be encouraged. Um, everything that you need for the production, everything that you need for, for the book, for the movie, everything is going to fall into place in the name of Jesus. And so I strongly believe that just by the fact that you're stepping out on faith, uh, doing a work for the Lord. And so I strongly encourage you in that. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey, hey man, I, and I receive everything that you're saying too, woman of God. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Now I do want to ask you, um, you know, we still have some time. You know? Yes, we do. We do. But uh, I need to ask you just in case, um, do you have any specific questions that you would like to ask me? Well, you know what? Um, I would like for you to kind of talk a little bit about your cause. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people are going to be watching the interview uh, because I'm, I'm here on your, your platform as a guest, but they may not necessarily know about you and your cause. And so I would love for you to kind of talk a little bit more about your cause and what it is that you do so that the people that are following me would be able to actually get plugged in with you as well, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all, woman of God. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's share this because there are new, there are new people watching. Um, and so let's make sure that we touch them with not only, you know, my message and my platform, but you know, let's let's inform them of what you're working on um, and also about your books and the availability of your books as well. Yes. Yes. I just want to say I only have one book and that's right okay. here. OK. And this is the name of my book is called The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding and Restoring the Urban Gittles in America, Second Edition. OK. OK. Uh, and where can they find your book? Oh, oh yes. Um, Everyone, you can find my book on Amazon.com. And also, I'm going to have the link in the uh, comment section below this video podcast. Okay. okay. So, but um, basically, woman of God, let me just uh, start a little bit from the beginning. Okay. Um, how I ended up getting into all of this, I would say, uh, you know, 
God put it on my heart to, you know, just look around at my environment where I was living. Right. And, um, you know, I just call myself trying to do something, you know. I, quote unquote, fed uh, homeless individuals. I gave okay. them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, as well as cheese, uh, cheese sandwich. And I told them about the Lord. Yeah. And, you know, I thought I was doing something, you know. It, yeah. it made me feel good. Yeah. But um, truth to the matter is, um, it was just a feel good uh, moment just for me because it really wasn't solving the issues. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, I just thought I was just doing something, making, right. a, making a difference, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was paying money out of my own pocket, you know, mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did it not to be seen. So I was doing this, you know, like... Um, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't have uh, anybody working with me. Right. So anyway, I just want to say this, that uh, I had an encounter uh, with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Yes. You know, and that, I'm giving him all the credit for this. Yeah. Um, and this is my interpretation of what I got out of it. Um, okay. He, 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 the Lord told me that what I was doing was, it was nice. I had good intentions, mm -hmm. but he told me that all I was doing was just putting a bandaid on an open wound. You, that's what I just visualized. I just said in my mind, I promise you, I just said in my head that he just, he was putting a bandaid on a wound and then you said it. <laughs> and so he told me in order to, in order to, um, you know, solve these uh, problems yes. in, in the uh, black community. Yeah. I'm going to have to put stitches mm. on that open wound. And that is mm -hmm. woman of God by creating uh, mm. this Christian business that I'm trying to uh, create. And it's yes. called the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. Okay. Okay. And, um, but I have to be honest, uh, the Lord didn't tell me who was going to work with me to help me build this because as far as I'm concerned, woman of God, this is a Nehemiah assignment. I understand. And uh, but, so like, but okay, you know, so that's, what, that's what he does, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, and I'm going to try to uh, speed it up because I don't want to, you know, take up too much time. But um, in a nutshell, I'm just speeding this stuff up a little. Um, okay. When I used to stay in the quote unquote hood uh, inner cities, um, it was always a church on every block and then a liquor store, church mm. liquor store. Yeah. And so, and I was thinking, I'm like, well, God has all this power. So why is God is not in the inner cities? Right. And so um, basically what I got out of that was that a lot of um our Christian leaders, you know, they, a lot of them just want to be seen, woman of God. I just have to mm -hmm. say it like this, unfortunately. Yeah. It's all about competition. You know, I got mine, you get yours. Yeah. Because when I uh, reached out to the different, um, I would say, uh, Black churches uh, in the community, they were just saying, oh, keep up the good work. You're doing a good job. But they didn't mm -hmm. want to work with me. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want to work with me. And that yeah. wasn't cool at all. And I got very disappointed about that. Uh, so I yeah. have some church heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Um, um, so the Lord, he didn't tell me like how I was going to be able, who he was going to bring to, to help me build this uh, organization. Right. And so I got kind of frustrated, you know, then my life was uh, it was in danger, you know. Someone threatened to harm me. Mm. I didn't like. That. Was that as a result of this movement? Uh, that was well, that was a, uh, as a result of me going out trying to help, you know, feed, you know, quote unquote, um, homeless individuals. Okay. okay. So it was just I didn't like that that part, and so you know that opened up my eyes. I'm like, hey, look, you know, I don't. Yeah. You know, I'm out here and actually I was doing this from nine o'clock in the evening time up until about, I would say, two in the morning. Oh, yeah. that The time frame. Yeah. OK. 
But yeah. that's when, you know, I, 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 felt, I felt emboldened, you know, to go out there and yeah. do that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, somebody threatened, you know, stick me up and stuff like that and harm me and stuff. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. want to contribute on the black on black crime. So no, I, I just I and so I, I, I left and I, I, I uh, relocated um, from the neighborhood I used to live in, which was yeah. Austin. OK. That's okay. on the west side of Chicago. And so okay. I moved on the uh, north side of Chicago. OK. You know, mm -hmm. and so but then, you know, when I was looking on the news and things like that, I kept seeing about our young youth, you know, constantly being, you know, um, killed in the streets and stuff like that. It, it, it really bothered me. It, it bothered my heart, you know. Yeah. And yeah. um you know, I didn't have no tunnel vision. I, I really, it really t it upset me. So then, yeah. you know, I, you know, prayed and asked the Lord, well, where do I go from here, Lord? You yeah. blessed me to get out of the inner city. I'm grateful right. for that. He also blessed me to um, go to college. So I was grateful for that. Um, even though I am going to say I was, I benefited from the um, affirmative action programs. Okay. But, you know, I took advantage of that because I wanted to educate myself. I wanted right. to do that so that way I can use that uh, education that the Lord has blessed me with to give back mm -hmm. to the community. But right. I want this organization to be different than I would say, quote unquote, different different from other black, uh, quote unquote, um, businesses and organizations. This is based on my experience, woman of God. Yeah, in this business, yes, I want to make sure that everybody yeah. that's going to uh, be part of this, and also this is going to be membership to Woman of God. Yeah. Over yeah. here, we want to raise the bar. Yeah. So over here, I want to make sure that we're going to screen um, and make or vet and make sure that we have people that really want more out of life. Those are the people I want to serve. I really want to help single black mothers, single black fathers that's okay. trapped in these inner cities yeah that want more out of life yeah and so that's what god called me to do to work with them and mm -hmm. um help them and, and be able to provide them with basic resources yeah you know? and you're in the chicago area correct yes ma'am but everybody so, here uh, everybody here in chicago based uh -huh. on my experience woman of god they all about themselves i got mine you get yours that's yeah. because of that Willie Lynch mentality. God is calling me to come against this Willie Lynch mentality. And that's what yeah. my business is going to be about. We have to yeah. heal from um, that slave mentality. Also, yeah. um, this organization is for, I would say, African immigrants. Okay. So they have to heal from that colonized mindset. Right. We're going right. to heal collectively give it to the Lord, you know, all these problems that we have and learn how to get along with each other first. Yeah. And yeah. once we're able to do that, woman of God, we can expand this business to the African continent, beginning in South Africa. Our goal yeah. is to um, expand to 10 African nations, set up um, local chapters. So that way we can do international trade with our brothers and sisters on the continent. Yeah. Um, but again, yes, we want to heal. Um, I, all I can tell you, woman of God, is a lot of um, brothers and sisters that I come across. Yeah. Yes, they. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say this in a nice way, because I've ran across a lot of, quote unquote, the most ignorant type of people. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I ask the Lord for patience. You know, I, I don't like to be disrespected. I'm like, doggone it. I'm out here trying to be a blessing to you. You know, yeah, I don't I, want, I, want I, you up here cussing me out and all that stuff. So I'm like, hey, yeah. look, um, I, I need you to uh, chill with that if you want me to help you. Right. And that's so the I'm sad thing. That's, that's one of the sad things about working and helping people in a community that are not used to help. When the help shows up, you know, when the help shows up and it's not accepted or appreciated, that that can be an issue. And so I pray that the Lord gives you resources, that he brings the right people uh, into your life that cross your path to cause your promotion and your success. 
uh, that the Lord sends people from all directions that have a heart, that have a heart for ministry, a heart for the things of God, because that's what it's going to take. It's going to have it's going to have to be people that have a heart for God, a heart like God to be able to help those that are in need that don't that are not used to being helped. So therefore, we see the lashing out. We see, see the vulgarity. We see the threats. We see those things because we're talking about unhealed people uh, going through traumas. And now sh help shows up, but they don't know what that looks like. Uh, 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 woman of God, yes. I do. I got to mention this to you, though. Uh, yeah. what's, what makes um, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago um, you know, what's going to make us stand out again is that we're going to screen people and we want the best. We want we want to bring the best. We want to help people reach their life goals. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, long as it's legal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the main thing. So but um, again, I got I got to put this out here. Um, yeah. Once I'm able to, uh, like I say, with this book. Woman of God, I can't make people buy this book. This book has been on Amazon for 12 years, still barely selling. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I wrote the vision and made it plain in here. And I wrote about my experience uh, when I used to do um, street ministry. I did uh -huh. that for two years. Okay. You know, back in the 90s. Okay. All right. Um, I would say also I have a virtual store. I sell on my virtual store. I sell um, posters, um, beach towels, coffee mugs, etc. Okay. okay. But items on there is barely selling Woman of God. Again, yeah. I can't make people buy those those things. No, we, we but, can't make people. Yeah. But yes, but this is why I created this platform. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be just uh, audio uh, podcast. Now I do video podcast so people can see me. And woman of God, I do read um sometimes when I do my um show, I read my speeches word for word yeah. without shame because I want to make sure people hear yeah. me loud and clear. Yeah, yes. especially you have a specific message that you want to get out. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Yeah, and it's my show too. You know what I'm saying? That, hey, that part, that part. And, and yeah. then also, yeah, look, I'm not yeah. trying to uh copy somebody else's stuff. This is me. I like to keep it authentic. That's all. That's right, that's right. But so anyway, woman, God, I got to go there with you. So anyway, once yeah. uh, I'm able, and I, this is what I'm praying for, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to intervene and yeah. provide, uh, um, perform a 21st century miracle on my behalf. In the name justify of justify all this stuff yeah. that I've been going through, because I'm trying yeah. to uh, move this Christian business to the next level. Yeah, and that's to get it on the big screen, and the yeah. proceeds from the film. That's going to put me in a better position financially where I can hire qualified black middle class professionals. Yeah. African uh, immigrants within the United States of America to work with me. But everybody's going to have to um, read. I want them to read my story first so that they know what they're getting themselves involved with. Um, yeah. Again, I don't want any uh, con artists in my business. And if I oh, find, yeah. you know, if we find out, we're going to hold those people accountable. Yeah. So no con artists, no urban yeah. terrorists, no pedophiles. Yeah. Yeah. No Intent. degenerates. Now some yeah. people, now some people, woman of God, to say, "Well, man, you sound like you're judging." I'm like, no, that's not judging. If those people have that type of lifestyle and they, that's what they're into, I don't want to associate myself with those type of people. Yeah. Not you're saying I'm saying better, but I got dog on it. I, I'm standing on principle. Yeah, and you're standing on principle and integrity. Yeah. Yeah, and so in my business, I want people to sign that community pledge and say, hey, look, I agree. I want to be a member, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, sign the community pledge, pass our criminal background check. And I want people yeah. to submit their thumbprints to be placed in our database. Because over yeah. here, we're not going to just have people just want to freeload. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. And it's, you know, you sound very passionate about what you're working on. And, and again, I do believe that the Lord is going to bless your efforts, that he is going to send the right people. And I pray that he gives you the wisdom, wisdom yes. and insight uh, to know when those people show up and He, the Holy Spirit will give you guidance on yes. how to move and what to do and when to do it. And I know he can do it because he does it for me. 
Now, um, I do, yeah, yes. Now, I do want to mention we are going to have a second chance program. Okay. Because um, for, I would say, people for, um, I would say, ex offenders for nonviolent crimes, because that's what God is all about. So we want to yeah. bring those, those people into the fold, former gang members. They're yeah. welcome to join us. We'll bring them into the fold. And yeah. homeless individuals, we'll bring yeah. them into the, the fold, but they're going to have to follow, you know, um, our guidelines. You know, they're going to have to be in agreement and all that stuff, too. And that's everybody. Everybody, everybody being treated the everybody same. Everybody has also, integrity. Also, woman of God, I'm going to go there, too. Non-Black sympathizers are welcome to join us, not as groups, but as individuals. Gotcha. So, so we'll let those persons in and they have to take uh, a back seat because this is black people and African people's responsibility to help build this organization and help uh, get it popping here in the city of Chicago for credibility before I bring it to the African continent. Right, right. Also, right. woman of God, I'm praying that um, this uh, Christian business will... Um, be similar to like a McDonald franchise that it will um, be uh, be able to spread in all the major uh, inner cities here in the United States of America. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that it's going to be effective and it can be passed down, you know, to, you know, our members, you know, for the next generation. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. amen. So I'm sure you've already probably taken all the steps that you need to take. Uh, do you, do you have a business coach? Kind of helping with the model of everything. Do you have you partnered with anybody? I don't have anyone, woman of God. And woman okay. of God, the main thing is I just want to make sure that people are we're gonna stay focused over here. I don't want to yeah. hear people trying to give me ideas. Oh, you should do this and that. You know, the main thing is I'm trying to uh, get this book on that mm -hmm. bestsellers list. That's the main thing. So that way, that's gonna put me in a better position financially, so I can do all the stuff that I talk about. Right. Well, let me let me tell you what I would recommend. This is something that I that I started for myself is um, every city uh, has a small business development. Oh, yeah. Um, I went through, Yes, I, I yeah. talked to those. And if you if you partner with the right one, they will guide you on the business steps, help you put together your business plan. Yeah, I have a business plan. plan, but they also help you to get funding and finances, which is what you need to put the vision. And so you should talk to them about the finances part. They can actually put together um, plans to present to loan uh, loan officers and lenders, and they will actually give you a list of the people that would be uh, more apt to approve the loan. And so that is what I would that is what I would recommend you to do is find one that you can talk to about the financial part. Let them know what your vision is. And they can point you in the direction of somebody that they know. And some of it could be a loan or it could even be a grant, which is, you know, nothing that you pay back. And so uh, I would strongly recommend that for you. I hear what you're saying, woman of God, and I respect your decision, you know, your opinion, what you're saying. But uh, at this point in time, my goal is to um, turn my book into a film. And that right. way I don't have to sit up here and have to solicit, be begging, you know, someone right. else you know for um loans and all that stuff so you already have the money to get that started to to I, get the i sure don't but what i'm saying my goal is to turn this thing into a film okay but and that's I'm that's what's going to help bring everything to pass because you know that's the problem now yes there's a lot of um nonprofits that's out here Right. But they're being funded by the white supremacist financial elites, and those people put limits on what those nonprofits can and can't do. I'm not doing gotcha. that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you're kind of being leery about the type of funding. Of course, because they're going to have stipulations. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I um, want people to know that this is legitimate. You know, yeah. there's no scam. Buying my book is not a scam, it's on Amazon. Buying exactly. items from my virtual store, you you purchase it, you're gonna get it. Yeah. 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 Well, I tell you what, Mr. Barbie, it has been amazing being here uh, with you today. And I thank you for taking the opportunity to share your platform as well. Because again, I know that a lot of new people are gonna be watching this uh, interview. 
And so I think it was very good for you to, to present your platform. And I, I, I like the passion that you have because it's personal. And that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big deal right there that you're fully invested in, in the vision and in the plan. I think that's amazing. Yeah, because woman of God, I know why I, I'm here. I know what my purpose is. I understand yeah. um, that mission that the Lord laid on my heart. He didn't just do that just to do that. Right. Uh, that's what I was called to do. And so I'm going to do the best that I can within uh, the limited resources that I have to make that happen. But again, right. woman of God, I'm grateful that yeah. the, uh, God has allowed us to use, um, let's say, this new technology. Yeah. yeah. You know, to help, you know, get our message out there. And I yeah. over here, I just want to use that technology wisely. That's all. Oh, over yeah. Here, I, don't want people, I don't want people, I'm just saying, you know, I don't want people to, you know, like be on my show that's full, you know, that's do a lot of hate speeches and stuff. We ain't with oh, that. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, I'm no. just saying with that. I ain't with that. No, no, that that wouldn't benefit anybody. <laughs> of course not. But yeah. that's what. But unfortunately, woman of God, though, that's the people. People like to hear that stuff for the views. You know, they the ones that get all the likes. It's sad, but and I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna um. You know, say um this organization's name and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a lot of black organizations that've been out here for years. You know, yeah. but yet mm -hmm. I mean. The community is not changing, so I'm not going to want to partner with a uh, organiza black organizations that have been out here for years. Ours is grassroots, yeah. you know, but I want to have new ideas. That's all. I want to help yeah. turn people's ideas into a reality. That's how come I have to put my stuff out there first. Also, woman of God, I got to go there. The name of my film is called Hood Liberator, Made in Chicago. The War Against Willie Lynch Begins. It's based on my revised book. Yeah, but I just want people to see it in real time. That's all. I think my second film is going to be made in South Africa. It's called okay. African Liberator: Battle Against the Colonized Mindset. Mm. And so I, I, I'm I'm so ready for this woman of God. I can tell. I'm, you got me fired up. <laughs> and I, 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 I didn't go into it. I didn't go into That's details. I'm going to do that when I come on your show. So that way I can go into a little more details and you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yes. Well, listen, it, it will be just in a few days that, uh, next week that we will be having that interview. And yeah. uh, it's going to be amazing. Looking forward to the opportunity where we can uh, dive deeper and ask more questions about your platform and get more information. And then not only that, you know, if someone is interested uh, in partnership, you know, he, he talked a lot about the prerequisites for what it requires. Uh, reach out to him uh, and let him know if, if you would like to make, you know, some type of membership pledge or uh, donation, uh, whatever you feel like you are being spirit led of the Lord to do to partner with him in his endeavors, reach out to him. Uh, I know that he, he's on Facebook, he's on Twitter, he's on uh, most major platforms. So I strongly encourage you reach out and, and help him with uh, making this come to pass. Yeah. Amen. Um, let me know, are, are you finished or do you have any other questions you would like to ask me before I close out? No, I am good. Again, I just thank you for the opportunity to be here, to be able to um, share this space and time with you uh, was amazing. Uh, I feel like I know a lot more about you. I hear your passion and um, that's going to help me next week when we do our interview. But um, I thank you again, man of God, for allowing me to come uh, and be able to fellowship with you. Thank you so much. No problem. And so um, I have that written down on my calendar. That's going to be next Wednesday at seven o'clock. Next Wednesday, the 20th at seven o'clock. Yes. All right. I'm really happy. and I'm looking forward for that. Um, also, I, I just want to encourage all of my listeners out there, please mark your calendar for March, December 30th. That's where I'm holding uh, our uh, monthly virtual conference. So what I do is that, you know, I talk for about 30 minutes. After I'm done, I open up the show for um, Q&A. So that way people can call in and talk to me directly and ask me specific questions. But um, I, only do, I only do it once a month, but I do that in order to try to raise uh, capital for our film project. Um, if you're a U.S. citizen, 
I recommend that you would donate through our PayPal page because you can use it as a tax write-off because this is a legitimate 501c3 um, business. But also we have our um, revised uh, GoFundMe page. So I encourage people to um, donate through that. And you can find all of my links, again, in the comment section below this video podcast. Um, again, um, my revised or my revised book, this is the foundation of my Christian business. I didn't go into detail, but I'm going to just share a little bit of this. Um, it's going to be um, based on nine main different components, but the three main components is going to be a social service component, a spiritual component, which is going to be optional for secular people. I want this to be a, it's a Christian business, but I also want to reach out to the laws. I, I want to give our black youth an opportunity to use their talents and skills positively rather than sitting up here, getting caught up with um, um, thinking about being a criminal because that's right. how um, they, you know, they end up uh, becoming um, the school to prison pipeline. They get caught up into that. So yeah. I want to teach our youth not to get caught up into that. Right. And most of all, I want to work with um, parents. The parents give them options. You know, I don't want to see none of my members um, living in no urban war zone, but I want to bring the bring this Christian business to those high crime, gang and drug invested communities to um, raise the bar. Yeah. And let people and let them understand that, hey, look, we're not here to um, say that we better and all that stuff. We're here to try to help end the gender, help end the genocide here in the city of Chicago to make Chicago a model for other cities around the country. And I want the black world to see what I've been trying to do for the past 32 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's been frustrating, woman of God, but it's okay. Yeah, I'm still grateful that um, the Lord is still um, giving me. Um, I would say um, perseverance to still stand to want to do this. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want other people that have good ideas to be overlooked. So, with that being said, yeah. uh, Heavenly Father, I come before you as humble as I know how, Lord. Thank you again, Lord Jesus, again for this opportunity for allowing me to um, use my voice, Lord, to use this platform to um, try to uh, reach. Um, and connect with other like-minded black people, like-minded African people that's listening. Um, if it was up to me, Lord Jesus, everybody would be on board, Lord. This um, book would be on that bestseller list by now, Lord. This uh, film project would be fully funded and made by now, but you know what's best, Lord. You know what's best. But anyway, Lord, um, again, I'm documenting what I'm doing. I'm doing the best that I can, Lord, with the limited resources that I have. But um, please perform a 21st century miracle for me, Lord. Have mercy, Lord, on these urban terrorists that's terrorizing our communities, Lord, killing our kids, the youth, Lord, at random, Lord. Please, Lord, let that uh, turn around that situation, Lord. I pray for peace, Lord, throughout here, the, the United States of America, Lord. Um, I pray for peace, Lord, on the African continent and also around the globe, Lord. But definitely, Lord Jesus, just um, connect me with more people like Sister Renee. She's been working with me for the past 12 years behind the scenes, Lord. Grateful for her, Lord. And um, thank you for allowing me to meet, Lord, and connect with Minister Stephanie um, Seaton, Lord. Bless her ministry, Lord. Bless her books, Lord, and all the things that she's doing, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. And Lord, and Heavenly Father, please allow my um, platform to grow, Lord. Please touch the hearts and minds of non-Black sympathizers to want to be part of this too, Lord, uh, to help. But again, Lord, this is Black people's responsibilities, Lord, for us to take control of our communities, Lord. Please let um, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, Lord, raise the bar, Lord, the standard, Lord, in Black America, Lord, and let us lead, Lord, not sit up here and be second guessing and following other people's um, ideologies and things like that, Lord, but let us take the lead, Lord. 
and let us make our presence known on the African continent. Let them receive us, Lord, when we go over there, Lord, to uh, replicate the business there, Lord. Jesus' name I pray, amen. And that's going to conclude our show for um, today. Thank you all for listening. Peace and blessings. <laughs>